I'm going to finish up section 1.5 on solving quadratic equations. And we had left off on the quadratic formula. So when you have a quadratic equation in general form, where you have all the algebraic terms on one side and zero on the other, you can use the quadratic formula to solve that quadratic equation. And the quadratic formula is derived from completing the square on the first two terms in the quadratic equation when it's in general form. So you would subtract free C from both sides, divide everything by A, add the term that would complete the square on the left-hand side, et cetera. And so what you end up with is this. X is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC, the whole thing over 2A. And all you need to do when solving a quadratic equation is decide what A, B, and C are and plug it in and then evaluate the expression. Now, the problem with the quadratic equation over using factoring or using uh, the square root property is that it's got lots of places to make sign errors. So please be careful when you use this formula. First of all, I want to point out something to you right here. I am squaring a real number B in that expression. That first expression underneath the radical symbol can never be negative. It cannot. You cannot square a real number and get a negative value. So B squared cannot be negative. It can't be. So keep that in mind when you're using the quadratic formula that that first term cannot be negative. Now, that being said, the entire b squared minus 4ac could be negative. If you subtract 4 times a times c from whatever b squared is, you could get a negative value. And that would mean your solution would be complex. And we'll talk about that more in just a minute. All right, so let's solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. First of all, oh, it looks like I got some symbols missing here. That's some. Um, all right, here we go. So we're going to solve 2x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0 using the quadratic formula. So what we need to determine is, first of all, is it in general form where we have 0 on the right-hand side? Yes, it is. The second thing we need to determine is what A, what B, and what C are. And then we're going to plug that into the quadratic formula. So A is the number you're multiplying times, <clears throat> excuse me, the x squared. So it's the number that's a factor of that first term. So A is 2. B is the number that you're multiplying times your x. So in this case, B is 2 also. And C is always our constant. In this case, our constant is negative 1. Be sure to carry the sign of your term along with the A, B, and C. So since that last term is minus 1, C is equal to minus 1. All right, so now we're going to write the quadratic formula. x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And now we're going to plug and jug. So we're going to substitute 2 in for b. We're going to substitute 2 in for a and negative 1 in for C. And now we're going to chug through the arithmetic. So underneath that radical symbol, I have 2 squared, that would be 4, minus 2, excuse me, minus 4 times 2 times negative 1. Well, negative 4 times 2 times negative 1 would be positive 8. 
And all of that is over two times two is four. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and simplify what's underneath our radical symbol. Four plus eight is 12. All right, so at this point, you're pretty much done. And on an exam, if you type this into the answer box, I will give you 100% credit. However, if you were to type this into my math lab and hit submit, my math lab will count this incorrect. And the reason it will count it incorrect is number one, you haven't simplified the radical. And number two, you haven't simplified the fraction. So we need to do both of those things. To simplify a radical, you're going to remove any factors of my radicand. That's what that stuff underneath the radical is called, the radicand. I'm gonna remove any factors of my radicand that are perfect squares. Well, 12 is four times three. So I'm gonna write it that way. Now you have a property of radicals that says that if I have the square root of a times b, I can write that as the square root of a times the square root of b. So the square root of four times three, we can write as the square root of four times the square root of three. Now the square root of four is two. I'm almost done. So now I can simplify my fraction because I actually have a factor of two in common in the numerator and the denominator. Since there's a two in both the first term in the numerator and a two in the second term in the numerator, I can factor that out. And if I can factor it out, I can cancel it. So my answer is negative one plus or minus the square root of three over two. And I should be able to type that into my math lab just as I have it written here. And you may have noticed that in my math lab, if it shows up in the toolbar at the bottom of your problem, then you can use it. So when you're doing the problem, for example, if you have a plus or minus in your toolbar, you should be able to use it. Um, so you should be able to type the answer in exactly like this, negative one plus or minus the square root of three, the whole thing over two, and that should be acceptable. Okay. Now, we should technically check that answer. So it, what I would do to check it is I would get a decimal approximation using my calculator. You have a fraction button on your TI-84 calculator. If you go to the alpha button, click that, and then the Y equals, number one is your fraction button. And you can actually click on that and you can put your fraction in numerator and denominator and get a decimal approximation and then plug it back in and see if it works. All right, so if you have a quadratic equation in standard form and you look at the quadratic formula, the radicand the stuff underneath the square root symbol has a name. We call that radicand the discriminant. So the discriminant is the quantity b squared minus 4ac. The discriminant tells us about the nature of our solutions to our quadratic equation. Let's think about this. If the discriminant is a positive number, you can take the square root of a positive number. That's a real number. So if the discriminant is positive, you take the square root of a positive, that's real, then you're going to have two unequal real solutions. 
you're going to have minus b plus the square root of whatever your discriminant is, and you're going to have minus b minus the square root of whatever your discriminant is divided by 2a. Now, if your discriminant is zero, so all that stuff underneath the square root sign is the number zero, then the whole square root goes away, and you're left with minus b over 2a. That's all you have left. If the discriminant is zero, you get one repeated solution to your quadratic equation. If you were to factor it, you'd see that you get a binomial square when you factor it. If the discriminant is a negative number, well, we saw in section 1.4 that if you take the square root of a negative, that's a complex number. So if your discriminant is a negative number, you get two imaginary solutions, two complex number solutions, and they happen to be conjugates of each other. Because if you remember what a conjugate is, to get a conjugate of a complex number, all you do is change the sign of the imaginary part. Well, where do you get the imaginary part? You get the imaginary part from the square root of a negative, and you got a plus or minus in front of it. So if the discriminant is negative, you get two complex conjugate solutions. Okay, here is a graphical representation of this. If the discriminant is positive, that's what we mean when we say b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, then you have two real solutions to your quadratic equation. If you were to graph that, that means that your graph of your quadratic equation crosses the x-axis in two places. If your discriminant is zero, that's the case where the graph of your quadratic actually comes down and touches the x-axis. If your discriminant is negative and you were to graph the quadratic equation, you would not get any intercepts. So what this tells you is that when the, inter the solutions to your quadratic equation are real numbers, then you have x-intercepts. Okay, so let's look at the discriminant. And again, I've lost my symbols. Let me put these in here. It's 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 equals 0. Okay, so all we're going to do is look at the discriminant. That's all we're going to do. And from the value of the discriminant, we're going to determine the nature of the solutions of this quadratic equation. So the discriminant is b squared minus 4 times a times C. So I need to determine from my quadratic equation what A and B and C are. A is the number that we multiply times the x squared. So in this case, A is 2. B is the number that we multiply times our x. So in this case, B is negative 7. Remember that the sign goes with your A, B, and C. And c is the constant. So in this case, c is negative 4. Okay, now we're going to plug that in. So I have negative 7 squared. Now look at what I did. I put that negative inside parentheses just to make sure that I am squaring negative 7 and not squaring 7 and then making it negative. I'm squaring the number negative 7. Again, b squared, this right here, can never be negative. It can't. Because anytime I square a real number, it will be positive. All right, so I got negative 7 squared minus 4 times a is 2 times c, which is negative 4. Now I'm going to crunch through the numbers here. So I have 49. I have a negative times negative is going to give me positive. Looks like I have 8 times 4 is 32. And then I'm going to add those together and I'm going to get 81. So what I see here is that since this number is positive, that is a positive number, what's the nature of the solutions to this quadratic equation? It's going to have two real unequal solutions. So two unequal real solutions. 
Now let me give you a hint here. 81 is a perfect square. If your discriminant is a perfect square, 81 is 9 squared. If your discriminant is a perfect square, your equation is factorable. So you can factor 2x squared minus 7x minus 4 and solve it using factoring. Or you can use the quadratic formula. That works too. Okay, and that's the end of section 1.5. I'm going to do section 1.6 in a separate video and post that to Blackboard. See you then.